Continuing our course introduction to understanding abuse, what I would like to do now is to look at a difficult area of vulnerable people. And by vulnerable people, I mean people, elderly people <clears throat> and people with disabilities. So what is an older person? There's actually no agreed upon definition about when someone would be considered an older person. It differs from country to country. So there's no international agreement, as I said. The World, the World Health Organization uses 60 as the age when someone would be considered an older person. Um, so the question is, what would be considered abuse of an older person? Um, so not, not just someone being unkind and how they treat someone, but what is abusive behavior? So this is a secular definition of abuse of an older person. Abuse of an older person involves negligent behavior or willful infliction of injury unreasonable confinement, intimidation or cruel punishment with resulting physical or emotional harm or pain by his or her caretaker, family member or other individual who has an on ongoing relationship with the older person. Now that's a definition in the secular world about uh, abuse of elderly people. So it's negligent behaviour, infliction of injury, unreasonable confinement, intimidation, punishment, physical and emotional harm by the caretaker uh, involved. And this can be a single or repeated act. It could be a lack of appropriate action. Um, and it occurs when there's an expectation of trust. So you expect that the person who is being abusive should actually be kind and caring. And the opposite is true. They're causing harm and distress to the older person. So there are a number of ways older people can suffer from abuse. That can be verbal abuse. We've spoken about that in previous lectures, what verbal abuse is. Coercive control, so controlling the person, making them do things, manipulating them into doing things that they don't want to do themselves. Threatening and trying to frighten them. <clears throat> um, bullying them. Harassing them. Mind games, gaslighting. Remember, in the previous lecture I said that gaslighting is a term that's used to mean crazy making when someone starts believing that they, they can't think for themselves, that they're going crazy, that their understanding of life, their perception of things isn't accurate and then they go off into the abuser to be able to un, to be able to think properly. Turning a blind eye to, to the elderly person and their needs, ignoring them, abandoning them, leaving them all on their own, deprivation of social stimulus and pleasurable social activities. So they're left all on their own. They're, they don't have a social life. They don't meet up with other people. They don't engage in activities that could be helpful for them. <clears throat> I, I know of an, uh, uh, an older man in Scotland who was in this kind of situation. The authorities got involved and sent him to a kind of respite uh, thing a couple of days a week where he was around people and they would do day trips together and do activities. It's a tremendous change in that person as, as he had positive, uh, enjoyable social activity and uh, things that were stimulating for him. Isolation from uh, other people, relatives. Um, people are not allowed to come and visit. Maybe if they're uh, physically impaired in some way, then they, they can't go and visit themselves. Uh, they could financial, this happens a lot, financial abuse. So they take advantage of their money or properties. Uh, they refuse them access to their money. If you can't get access to your money, then you become dependent on that person because you need to be able to pay your bills and buy food and, and, and drink. They could steal their money, uh, build up debt in their name. And if you think of technology and how older people can be so dependent on younger people to be able to understand technology and perhaps without them knowing, the person's taking advantage of their money and, and spending it or making building up debt, making them pay for someone else's goods or lying about the money, the amount of money needed for their care. And they could just, um, the older person, because they're not so up to date with what that involves, and it might be overwhelming for them to look after the finances. People do these selfish, horrible things to others, use their credit cards without their permission. And something that's very common, they trick them into signing a contract or change their will. Uh, people will 
gain their trust, build relationship with them in order to get them to sign their will, to, to, so that they're getting all their money instead of the people that should be getting the money. It happens a lot. So you got, we talked about abuse. There's also neglect, which are very close and it's extremely bad as well. So the, the carer, the person responsible for the older person, disregards or ignores their duties towards that older person, especially when the older person cannot perform by themselves. For example, that could be eating, drinking, dressing, and the heating and lighting of the place where they live. So they just ignore them. They could be left alone for long periods of time. They could ignore the older person's needs regarding medical visits, medical tools and equipment, such as hearing devices, walkers, in Scotland we call these zimmers, uh, and glasses. Um, so they're suffering. And it, um, in order for that suffering to be alleviated, they need the abuser. So they so they might give in to the abuser so that they can hear, so that they can read, so that they can walk. Talk to them like a child or call them names. A lot of older people are, are spoken to in a childish way, uh, as if they're not able to understand. And if you reflect on what an older person has gone through in life and what they've done with their life, we should be giving them a huge amount of respect. Over under under medicating, I, I knew an older man <clears throat> whose carer over medicated him, and he was left a zombie. Uh, wasn't able to do anything to sleep all day, and when the carer was removed, his medication was changed, and he was a completely different man. Not taking to them them to the bathroom, restricting or preventing religious or cultural practices, something that's really important to them, uh, to be able to go to church or or their their religion. And they, they're prevented from doing that. And that's a, if that's the most important in your life and that's taken away from you, that's incredibly painful. But they could also be living with a sense of guilt that they're not involved in their religion as they should be. Preventing them from making their own decisions and choices. Uh, instead of encouraging them to be responsible for themselves for as long as they can be, other people make these decisions for them. And what are the, some of the outcomes of being treated in this way? The older, older person can become angry and anxious. Uh, the they could be anxious that the person may leave them if they speak up, that they'll be left all, all on their own of no support, <clears throat> that they'll lose relationship with other members of the family, such as their grandchildren. <clears throat> Excuse me. So they don't speak up because they don't want to lose their grandchildren. Worry. If I speak up, who will believe me? They might cause people to think badly of them. They could be shy, uneasy, weak eye contact because they're living with a sense of shame and fear. They don't look people in the eye. Depression, hopelessness, sorrow because of the situation that they're in and the, the way that their life is ending. Blame themselves for what they're going through. Guilt, self-blame guilt, very similar. I, I am in the wrong. It's my fault because of the way I'm being treated. Hopelessness. If they've, had, if they've tried to bring change, if they've reported the abuse and nothing has happened, they could sense a sense of hopelessness, nothing, nothing's going to change. I'm, uh, this is the way it's going to be for the rest of my life. Excessive crying because things are so difficult for them. And suicidal ideation. It'd be better if I wasn't here. I'll just give up. End it all. And then they could talk badly about themselves to others. They could be hesitant to speak openly. Be upset or agitated. <clears throat> withdrawn and uncommunicative or non-responsive, confused, again, trying to understand what's going on and why they've been treated this way, and disorientated. I mean, if you think of all the, an elder, elderly person with the limitations that they have and being treated in this way with lack of medical care, um, social stimulus, physical stimulus, the mind games are going on, as well as being confused, they could be disorientated, restless, Suspicious of people. Who are you? What are you up to? Why, why are you treating me this way? Why are you being nice to me? And it could be a sudden change or of or unusual behaviour. <clears throat> For example, they could start sucking or biting or rocking. You say, why are they doing it? It's a way of self-protection because things are so difficult for them. Hoarding uh, and looking after their things. No one's going to touch what they have. Uh, changes in sleeping patterns. It's again, because of 
sleep problems are, uh, are common in abusive situations. If they're not getting the medicine properly, getting the right kind of s stimulus, if they're uh, anxious with the mind games going on, uh, maybe they're being disturbed when they should be sleeping. Changes in sleeping patterns might indicate that something's going on. Weight changes, bad hygiene, especially if they're being ne neglected, unkempt, uh, similar to bad hygiene, inadequately clothed. Then living in a chaotic or a dilapidated environment. So they're not looking after themselves or the person, the carer is not looking after them the way they should be. They might have insufficient food. So they're mal malnourished or not enough drink. They're dehydrated. So they have lack of assistance in eating and drinking. And remember I spoke about being disorientated. That could be linked to being dehydrated. Lacking glasses, eyeglasses. <clears throat> False teeth walkers uh, or a wheelchair. So they like... The the, the 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 tools that we have when we when uh, we need aid with something so they might, if they don't have glasses how isolating is that if you can't see properly you can't read um, you can't interact with people um, if they don't have proper teeth they might not be able to eat they could be in pain uh, if they're not able to if they don't have a walker a zimmer or a wheelchair they, they won't be able to get to places so deprivation of these things is a terrible thing. Uh, they can be dirt facial urine smell or other health and safety hazards in their living environment because they're not being looked after properly. Uh, just as, and it might not be that they're letting themselves go. I know a lot of older people do struggle with these things because it's hard to do these as you get older, to physically care for your environment. But it could be a way of neglect. The person who is a carer is not looking after them as they should. Rashes, sores, or lice. Uh, if you see that an older person then it raises questions about how their carers are looking after them. An untreated medical condition. <clears throat> so as in other aspects of other forms of abuse, the, the community is really important. It's important that we build people around our lives, that there's community where possible that people from the church are visiting them. And that we, we're intentional and relational as we engage in life because that when when we've got community involved we pick up things we see things and we're able to bring a, a perspective on issues that you don't have if you're in isolation and so bringing that other perspective helps prevent the the mind control of abuse the way that people start believing about themselves and their view on life but it also prevents the abuser being able to some extent it provides a break uh, to the abuser being able to treat people this way. Community is extremely important uh, for all aspects of our lives, especially when someone is being treated in an abusive way. And now we we'll think about people with disabilities. Um, someone who has a disability has a physical or mental impairment then the long term limits their ability to car carry out daily activities. The person with the disability will probably need help from other people or carers to carry out these tasks. Very similar like what we're just describing with the older person who's not able because of physical restrictions to be able to do some things. And sometimes carers can be abusive by engaging in coercive and controlling behaviour towards them. So common types of emotional abusive behaviours towards people with disabilities include name calling, guilt tripping, so the carer, which could be a family member, ensures that the person with a disability feels guilty for the help that they have to provide and for the things that they've missed out on in life as a result. Now, while I say this, it's important as you think of the carer, they are sacrificing an awful lot to be able to care for someone. And not all people that receive care are kind and thankful. Um, so if you're giving up and sacrificing an awful lot for your the person you're caring for, and they're angry, they're ungrateful, they're grumpy. The carer could become irritated, angry, resentful. So I, I understand that. That's it's a very difficult position to be in. But this is another level. Um, so while, while I'm saying this, I'm trying to be understanding towards a carer. So I'm not talking about someone, a carer who's tired, uh, having to care for a difficult person, who's not appreciative of the help they're giving, doesn't understand all they're giving up. That's not what I mean. It's another level than that. It's a, it's a punishment. I mean, the, the, it's a way of punishing 
the person that they're caring for so that they're feeling guilty. So they withhold medication or they over-medicate, as I said earlier on. Destroying or disabling equipment. If, uh, if you need a wheelchair and someone deliberately breaks a wheelchair, then you're stuck and you're totally dependent on the abuser. Withholding assistant, assistance, preparing, preparing food and drink. Putting too hot food in the mouth. And that would obviously be for those who need help with eating. Financial abuse, similar to what I said about older people. So that's the common things that arise when you're talking about people, older people uh, and people with disabilities. Um, so I hope you found that helpful to give you insights into how to be informed when you're caring for these people.